I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. Our fight for civil rights and social justice across this country's history is rich. I mean, really rich. It's fraught with amazingly powerful words from courageous men and women. Men and women who risk more than even imaginable to most of us. And that's what makes the work we're doing here at Wild Black Across Black History Month so important. Tamika's here today to deliver a speech by Fannie Lou Hamer that literally changed the course of Black voting rights in this country. Ms. Hamer's August 22, 1964 speech before the Credentials Committee, Democratic National Convention. Before we get to Tamika's delivery, I want to enrich you just a bit more on both Ms. Fannie Lou Hamer and this particular speech. Ms. Hamer was born in Mississippi in 1917, the granddaughter of slaves and a sharecropper for much of her life. In 1962, the organization SNCC held a voter registration in her hometown of Ruleville, where Ms. Hamer was surprised to learn that according to the U.S. Constitution, Black folks had been granted voting rights. A fact that white supremacists in the state and the country worked hard to keep Blacks from becoming aware of. At this understanding and the request for support, Ms. Hamer emphatically volunteered and was quoted saying of the opposition, the only thing they could do to me was kill me. And it seemed like they'd been trying to do that a little bit at a time ever since I could remember. Let's fast forward to 1964, only two or so years later. Ms. Hamer joins a group of 64 delegates to the DNC to petition the convention's credential committee for four seats on the convention floor. In this speech that you'll hear Tamika deliver momentarily, Fannie Lou Hamer discusses in detail the scare tactics and violence she and her others experienced in Mississippi as they attempted to register to vote. She talks about the physical roadblocks, what happened when her group got off the bus and tried to get a little to eat the violence they were subjected to by the police and others on the scene and at the police station. She's quoted saying, they beat me till my body went hard, till I couldn't bend my fingers or get up when they told me to. That's how I got this blood clot in my left eye. The sight's nearly gone now. And my kidneys was injured from the blow they gave me in the back. Even after all of this, she testified as to how upon her return and successful registration, she was threatened with the loss of her right to share crop if she didn't withdraw that registration. By the way, she didn't. And to me, this next point speaks so significantly to the opposition she faced then and we still face today. During this televised hearing that also featured Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., it was Fannie Lou Hamer's testimony that our government was most worried about. It was her words of overcoming and fighting for our rights that worried the establishment so much that the president of the United States at the time, Johnson, decided that the country should not hear or see her testimony. And instead, he scheduled a press conference to coincide with her time in order to draw the media's watchful eye. He actually called a press conference to announce that it had been nine months since Governor Connolly had been shot along with JFK. Although it seemed a successful diversion tactic, indeed it was not. The content of his announcement was so weak that media outlets saw through his attempt to hide her testimony. And that attempt then became the new story, which thrust her speech into prime time. Now, Tamika's mic is hot, and you have the context you need to fully grasp and understand what you're about to hear. So please allow me to introduce to Wild Black. Ms. Tamika D. Mallory, reading and then discussing the impact past and present of Fannie Lou Hamer's testimony to the Credentials Committee of the DNC in August 1964. Tamika, the floor is yours, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Mallory. 